Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Ezoic Explains. I'm Tyler Bishop, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about how to use SEO uh, testing on your website. So testing and SEO are two things that are really hard to kind of mesh together, partially because um, it's a live ecosystem, and we're not even really sure which variables matter the most. We have an idea, but we're not always sure. However, Google does give us some information, and we can use that information to do a little bit of testing, and I'm going to help you today use some of Google's tools and a little bit of money to do a test that actually uh, we can say objectively benefits your SEO strategy. So you can see here I'm inside of Google Search Console. I am at, uh, I've got a website here called ibjjfbrackets.com. It's for a martial arts tournament, and uh, it highlights uh, aspects of the bracket making process and some of the brackets. And uh, it doesn't get a lot of traffic, but um, I can actually go into my search console and go to performance. And I can look at clicks, impressions, average CTR, and position. And if I don't highlight some of these, I won't actually get to see some of the data down here. However, anything that I highlight, I'll actually get down here in the data as well. So in this case, I have uh, can see multiple uh, keywords that I rank for, and I can see here I've got one that I rank number five for. So I might be saying, "Hey, it would be great if I could maybe move that one up to number one." Uh, I can see I'm already, get, already getting about fifty percent of the of the traffic of of people that are actually searching for this. How the IB, how do IBJJF brackets work? Um, but there's only six impressions. So ranking number one for that keyword, the benefit is probably not that great. However, when I go to this one, IBJJF brackets, I can see I'm actually position nine with a 6% CTR, which isn't bad, but you can see there's 208 impressions, only 13 clicks. I could probably get a bigger swath of that traffic if I were to improve this. Your sites probably are dealing with much larger numbers, but in this case, we're going to just use this as a simple example. This is also a really good query because if I was to look at something like what IBJJF, um, for example, I may see myself ranking low and see it as a good target. However, when I look at the actual SERP, which is the search engine rankings page, uh, I can see that Wikipedia's answer here is at the top. Then I'm getting a carousel for people also ask uh, if this is on mobile. This is going to show up at the very top, uh, rich data. And then I can see the IBJJF is the next two results and then some videos. So actually the chances of me getting ahead of these things is not very good. So when I look at my actual query here, I can see there's no ads. There's actually just organic results. And this is really, really important because I'm down here below this carousel. There's my website. And I can see there's a lot of other sites that are ahead of me. And it would be great if I could get in front of them. So one of the ways that I can do this is actually spend a little bit of money to do some testing with Google ads. Uh, used to be called AdWords. Now Google, in their infinite wisdom, calls it Google ads. Nevertheless, you can set up a Google Ads account uh, for free. It's easy to do. Some of you that may have done keyword research in the past may have done this. I'm going to go in and I'm going to create a new campaign. Um, now I'm going to go through and I'm just going to say um, create a campaign without goals or guidance. Um, you could also go for website traffic. But in this case, I want to select search. Uh, I can put website visits and then I just need my website, which is IBJJF brackets.com and there we go so the biggest thing now is to that exact page I can look now this is my title tag right here so IBJJF official brackets how IBJJF brackets are created so one of the things I may want to consider here is these top results what are they um, essentially advertising to potential clickers is this what these people are looking for so I may be advertising here how the IBJJF brackets are created. However, I may want to lean more towards this is where you can find IBJJF brackets if it's something that you're looking for. So that is going to be the direction that I go. And I just want to focus on the search network here. Um, you can select whatever respective countries. Um, I would say the more limited, uh, the better, depending on the size of your audience or impressions, I would focus on whatever country the majority of your traffic comes from in the respective language. In my case, the United States and English. Um, in terms of audiences, none. And then uh, for the budget, um, you're going to have to spend at least $5 a day. 
but in this case, I'm just going to put in 10 to start. Delivery method standard is usually the best way, but you can do some uh, level of testing faster. If you select accelerated, you're going to look at more search queries. So in this case, I'm going to say accelerated. Um, bidding on, in this case, I want to say impression share. Um, so in this case, really the top of the page is going to be the, it'll be the only ad for this particular keyword. So I'm going to say anywhere on results page and percentage impression to share or to target. I'm going to say 95 and maximum CPC bid limit. Since there's no other bids, I'm just going to put in $2 is my maximum. Um, but my guess is I'll be able to get it even cheaper than that. So that is going to allow me to get started here. I'm going to click save and continue. And so this is my ad group. So IBJJF brackets. So again, my keyword is IBJJF brackets. So really, I just want that keyword because I want to figure out what my title tag has to do with my CTR. And I want to test multiple ones. So I really just want that keyword. So I'm going to put these brackets here. around, funny enough, the keyword IBJJF brackets. And this is going to be what's called an exact match, which means I only want to bid on that exact keyword. If I don't put these brackets here, I'll get what's called a broad match and Google will go crazy in what it allows uh, me to bid on and show my ad on. So I just want that exact keyword. And save and continue. And so now this is where I get a chance to actually write these ads. So you can see here, it's completely open and blank. So in this case, I might go I may be as simple as IBJJF brackets. Find the brackets you want. Uh, it gives me an option for a third headline. Since organic results aren't going to give me that option, I'm actually going to leave it out, despite the fact that Google is going to tell me over and over again that I shouldn't do that. Um, I could even include the actual URL path here if I wanted to. And then I can also test a different meta description. So in this case, I'm saying learn how IBJF brackets are really organized. Uh, in this case, I may say see the IBJJF brackets so that you can see how they work or what they look like. My assumption is maybe people are actually looking for the brackets versus trying to understand how they're done. Click done. And now that's one test. I can test another one now. And you can do this for infinity. I recommend testing about three or four total. And whenever you're finished, you will have your ad group here. And when you go in, you've got your keyword. And you can go to your ads. You can see here, mine didn't save. But you will have multiple ads here. And you'll be able to see. The clicks, the impressions, and the CTR of all of these after a while after they run. Uh, just focused on expanded text uh, ads. Do not uh, use responsive search ads um, or any other ad formats. Ignore Google's advice because remember, what we're trying to do is just create basically title tags and meta descriptions that mirror the organic ones. Because what we're going to be able to do then is see are the clicks, impressions, and CTR that we're getting here better than the ones that we are getting over here inside of Search Console. So my goal is to have a title tag, meta description that is performing better than these, and I want to take the best one. So let's say I've tested three. I'm going to pick, take the best one. Then I can go back into my website. I can go to the admin portion, and I can take this page now, and I can change the title and the meta description so that it better mirrors what people are looking for. And this should allow me to improve both of those metrics, which even if it doesn't improve my rankings, which most of the time you will see that it does, um, you will still get more traffic from this mere standpoint of more people will click on your search results. So no matter what, whether your rankings increase or not, let's hope they do, you will still get more traffic uh, because of these tests. And so if you're a site that gets lots and lots of traffic, and uh, the upside is maybe really great because you're ranking number nine for something that is getting you know, hundreds of thousands of impressions over a three month period of time. It is definitely worth spending uh, 10 to $15 to run one of these tests. This has been another episode of Ezoic Explains. And today we talked a little bit about how to test SEO on your website using information readily available on Google.